Good afternoon, and welcome to Rough Time Park here in Chicago, Illinois, for tonight, this afternoon's game between the Philadelphia Brown Trousers and our home side, Chicago Two Toplers. At this time, we'll introduce the starting lineup for the visiting Philadelphia Brown Trousers. Batting first, the right fielder, number 11, Hogue Wilson. Batting second, the center fielder, number 48, Greep Barlow. Batting third, the third baseman, number 9, Bent Wildly. Batting fourth, the first baseman, number 2, Murky Goodbar. Batting fifth, the left fielder, number 5, Wallace Gromit. Batting sixth, the shortstop, number 4, Mickey Lice. Batting seventh, the catcher, number 10, Trant Chauvin. Batting eighth, the second baseman, number 12, Pickles Dillhoffel. And batting ninth, the pitcher, number 30, Hash Buffums. And at this time, Chicago, let's make some noise for our T-Top Lads. Here they are as they take the field. The left fielder, number 23, Umpty Pool. The first baseman, number 13, Crispy Yellow. The catcher, number 14, Moopy Pound Cake. The shortstop, number 42, Bowtie Harvey. The second baseman, number 35, Cowie Bangett. The right fielder, number 22, Dim Barron. The center fielder, number 12, Ren Bugby. The third baseman, number 11, Ainsley Snakewacker. And taking the mound, the starting pitcher, number 10, Tuba Hoones. And for a dry, good time, Chicago, let's make some noise as we play ball. Hey, good afternoon to you all. From Chicago, Illinois, Rothstein Park is the location. My name's Hubba Baloney, listen to WMAQ, Chicago's only home for professional baseball here in the Continental League. That's the t list. Starting today. Four games out of first place. Currently sitting at eight and seven. A very exciting series with the New York Abadash. They did take the last game of that series. On the mound for them is Tubo Hunas. 0-2 so far, an ERA of 6.27. And he's going to give up a single to Cowie Bangett. Uh, excuse me, to, uh, to uh, Hog Wilson to start things off. And an attempt to steal, and he's in with the stolen base. The Philadelphia Brown Trousers, 5 and 10, last in the Continental League at present time. And that is Greep Barlow back in the uh, higher end of the batting water. And fills up the count, does Hoonis, and he will walk Barlow, so the opening two batsmen are on first and second with Bent Wildly coming up. First one is uh, very much into the seat. Going to hit that one right for Crispy Yellow. It will get the first out, but it will move the runners to second and third base with Murky Goodbar coming up with only one out. Goodbar. He's batting 400 so far. And that will, well, it will score one, but it does get the runner out at first. So Goodbar gets home the runner for the opening score here in the top of the first. One to nothing for Philadelphia. And that brings up Wallace Gromit. Not usually a starting player, but uh, moving things around all the brown trousers. He's going to pop that one up. It should be easy for Bowtie Harvey. And that will retire the side. So one hit, a walk, and uh, Murky Goodbar batting in the opening run for the game. Taking the field now on the, well, on the opening bat, it is one of those tremendous I can't even give my introduction. Umpty Pool hits home run number four. And the T-Tottlers' bats are alive and well here in Rothstein Park. 
crispy yellow. Facing Hash Buffins, a 1 and 2 record, an ERA of 4.59. He has thrown 9 strikeouts so far this season in the 3 games he has started. And he throws 3 balls right to Crispy Yellow. Good going to hit it to industry again! Oh my word, the bats are in fact alive. They might be they might be sprouting arms and legs and other appendages. No, I'm sorry, it's just that's just a bit of a radio joke for you all there, but um, my goodness, two to one, two home runs hit by the opening two batsmen, Mubi Pound Cake, now takes the blade against Ash Buffum, and he's going to strike out Pound Cake swinging, so that is going to be out number one. My goodness, two home runs this inning already, and here comes Bowtie Harvey, who has hit six already this season. Very early season, he's played 12 games so far for the T-Tartlers. Not a regular starter last season. He played, uh, he appeared in 29 of the 42 games. He does record out number two, which is easily caught. Right, here comes Cowie, bang it, and that's going to be our first pitch caught out. So again... Two hits, two home runs, and it's to industry. Because those home runs are brought to you by industry brand, fragrances, perfumes, and cologne. Because why would you want to smell like anything else in the world when you could smell like industry? Found whatever smells are so well. Nicky Lice gets to be going with a double. I think he had a, I think that was played off the wall by, um, by Ren Bugdy in center field. I saw Dim Barron was... Uh, struggling to find that one as well. Yeah, a very exciting time here at Rothstein Park for the uh, the bats to be swinging and the balls to be flying and for the fans to be looking alive as they do not uh, and looking li looking lively as they should uh, make sure they do not uh, let their minds wander. Mary, they be a baseball heading in your way. This is Pickles Dillhoff, well, eighth in the order. He's playing second base today. And he's going to walk. So with one out, we go to Hash Buffum. Dillhoff had an average of 368 in the nursery league, playing for the Charleston Crows. Uh, outstanding pickup for the brown trousers. Uh, Seems to be the go-to second baseman at the moment. Well, that is going to be a swinging strikeout of half Buffum to pitch up. That is going to be Hunis's first strikeout of the game. But still, it is 12, and we go two. Back to Hope Wilson, who had a single. Ultimately scored in the first inning, already at his second at-bat. Gives you an idea of the kind of day we're going to see. I think the bullpen might be stretched a little bit, and that is going to be an RBI. Well, he's going to, he's going to stay at, at first, and he got him at first. Oh, well, it, it was unfortunate. The RBI is scored. And I'm not certain that they're going to actually recredit him with the single, but he got caught off the bag, and that is going to retire the side. Well, it's fortunate for the, for the t -tartlers. as that stops things into their tracks. However, it is tied at two. Here in the bottom of the second. Buffums takes the mound and he's going to strike out his second for the day. Striking out Dim Barron, bringing up Ren Bugby. Bugby is batting 318 so far this season. The contributions in center field have been uh, noted. And he's going to get him out on that one, striking him out. Bring up Ainsley Snakewhacker. Snakewhacker is going to ground that one on the second pitch. And it goes right to Lice. The throw to Goodbar in time. 
and that will do it. Well, we go to the top of the third, it's still 2-2. Two two. And Greet Barlow on the first pitch oh. will fly it out right to the one. In fact, Jim Barron is there under it for out number one. And it goes through the legs of Tuba Hunis, who bent wildly, hits it right up the center. And he's on with a single, his first hit of the game. Now bring up Murky Goodbar, again the 400 batter. He did ground out, but it did bat a run in in the first inning. That is the first run of the two that can be attributed to the brown trousers. He's going to be on with a single, so that will be officially his first in the game. His second productive at bat. And Wallace Brahman coming back up there again, right past the glove of Kunis. And he's on with a single to now load the bases. That one going to Ren Bugby in center field yet again. Here is Mickey Lice. Mickey Lice had a double. That was uh, otherwise assumed to have been caught. Uh, unfortunate uh, fielding uh, mistake. Would want to say not officially an error, but uh, the, the double did in fact re was recorded. I think that was that's what, off the wall. That's what it was. It was not uh, just a bit of a. It, it took a bit of a bounce and uh, was fortunate. And ultimately did give the tying run to the brown trousers as the count is full. And Lice is going to drop that one just down the third base path. And this is going to be a fantastic at bat for Lice. He's going to he's going to clean off the bases with three runs scoring on that double. My word, it is now five to two. For the brown trousers, as Trump Sovin is going to... Well, we can all breathe a sigh of relief as Bullseye Harvey gets under that one for out number two. And we go down to Pickles Dillhoffel. Did, in fact, walk in the second inning. And that's going to be fouled just barely on the uh, on the foul side of the baseline. That is ball one. Another foul. Having a bit of a, bit of a control issue today. I'm not so I'm not so the control, they're just finding it. He's in this his multitude of pitches. I think his off-speed pitches are not really landing where they should be, and that is a walk. Uh, so that is Pickles Dillhoffel's second walk. And it brings up the pitcher spot. So hash buffums will pop that one up. Uh, into foul territory should be an easy one for Pound Cake. He gets it. And that will end the at bat for the brown trousers. Bottom of the third, Kunis starts things off. Kunis, to be fair, was hitting 240 as a pitcher last season, so has an ability to. Unfortunately, that time he grounds it right out to the infield. The throw was in time to good bar. And go back to the home run hitter, Umpty Cool. And Poole's going to be on with a single. And that was shallow skimming across it like a, like a stone skimming across a lake for a man named Poole. It's a crispy yellow home run again in the first inning. So one on on. Yellow's fourth home run was that hit, was that hit there. He's batting 367 coming into today's game. Swings at strike two. It's one and two. It is low for ball two. And he will walk. So the, the various uh, pitches around for Ash Buffum did not uh, entice Mr. Yellow. He is on with a, a walk. He is two on and Ruby Poundcake is going to drop that one. It's going to drop right fair into the corner. This is easily going to be extra bases for Poundcake. I think it might be well good fielding. I will say good fielding by Wallace. Uh, as that was uh, only allowing one run to score. Uh, otherwise, I think that would have been two runs scored on that one and possibly found kick to third. He stays in second and Bowtie Harvey has two runners on in scoring position. With a 3-0 and count, he might as well just take a hack at this one or just when he hits it foul. Demon! 
Count is full now after hitting it foul. And second one, and he's going to walk, so that will load the bases for Cowie Bang. With an opportunity for Bang batting 273 this season. He's only batted in one. Only had 22 at bats, so he's not a regular starter to Jeff. He's working his way in there, and he gets it past the glove of Murky Goodbar. One run scores. And the inning is still alive. Only one out so far. Bases continue to be loaded for Dim Barron. And Barron pops that one high into the air. It is an infield fly will called. And it's caught by Lice. Hey, Baron has had 14 runs batted in so far this season. Very impressive so far for the rookie. There's Ren Bugby. And former Mum Hudson, Baron. And this is now the former Haberdash. Uh, Ren Bugby played for the Haberdash last season. He batted 398 last season. He's batting 318 currently. And he's going to hit that one off the wall. That is going to be extra bases for Bugby. That will score two runs on a double. That is, that is, that is good. Those are runs back in numbers five and six for Ren Bugby. So perhaps that production that uh, that the T-Tottle has wanted is going to come from him. And that should be an easy out. Yes, in time, right to ice. And that was Ainsley Snakewacker recording out number three. But my word, uh, four runs scored in the third. We go to Hope Wilson. And an easy one pitch. One out. That goes right to the pitcher. Kunis makes the throw. We go to Greet Barlow, who's walked and is over one otherwise. Foul ball by. Barlow, who's now pitched his way into a, uh, found his way into a two and two count, hit by Tuba Hunis, who is already at 58 pitches today. My word. Well, the count is full, as is the scoreboard at the moment. I think if we had one of those, uh, we keep this up, we might be running out of some of the higher numbers. That's right to, uh, right to Harvey, the throw to yellow in time, and that is out number two. Bent wildly, that's going to be first pitch swing, and Kunis makes it through four. But the pitch count is getting very high, I think, for both uh, pitches and buffums. Uh, per my statistics, 53 pitches. And it does look like Kunis today will be over, so Nevada Escargo coming in. Escargo is batting 324 this season so far. And he's going to be on with a single. So staying alive on that one, I think instantly Snake Whacker was his, uh, was who was replacing for the day. And that's going to be it for Hash Buffum's Vip Cray Cray coming in. As the relief pitchers. We don't know who's going to be the relief yet for the. For the uh, for the tea tartlers, Jonas uh, and Hash Buffins, both the uh, starting pitchers are out. That's going to be a big strikeout of Humphrey Pool. And a man who has been two for two today with a home run and, and a single. Uh, that is a, a worthwhile out to get with this car go on first. Crispy Yellow, home run and a walk. I would imagine that Dick Cray Cray, who has already pitched 15 and a third inning this season uh, across seven different games, might be asked to do quite a bit of work today. Um, he is probably the, the most uh, preferred reliever. He made appearances in six different games for the Norfolk Cole Harpers. And uh, in, his, uh, in the 11 in in 11 innings, uh, opponents had an average of 195, so that's a very good, uh, very good outing for him. 
As we say, big pizza is coming in. Big Pita's facing Murphy Rupa. And that will be an easy out right to yellow. Bring up Wallace Gromit. Good bar of course. Uh, out of number two. Big Peters has an ERA of 415 so far this season. Uh, was a Charleston Pro. So they have an ERA of 150. In the 16th however, he was uh, very impressive. Breaking out three. Whip is box and hits per 1.33, so uh, a, a utility reliever for the T Tartlers, and he's been uh, he's been rather rather good. I think he's, he's definitely made some help uh, helped out the uh, the side. And it's a very good uh, thing to see over here in the uh, bottom of the fifth. Still six to five. This game seems to have settled a bit. That's going to be uh, a single. It's going to be a single for Bullseye Harvey. And with how we bang it, it's gonna be bang it with another lovely, uh, another lovely single up the middle to load the base to start uh, to start to fill up the bases again. Here's Dim Baron. Baron looking for his first hit of the game. He is stuck out in the uh, second, but he's over two, and that's gonna make him over three. It will challenge its hack up, but it will be a double play. Fancy Dan double play. That brings up Ren Bugby, who had the uh, uh, three RBI double. That's gonna be long and foul for him. Bugby, I think, uh, I'm getting a bit more criticism by uh, T Tartler fans. Kid in town, so to speak, as the count is full with two outs. We'll wait for this one to make that a comment. And he's going to walk. So that's going to load the bases now. For instantly Snake Whacker, who has not had a hit yet game. Uh, 0 and 2. 0 for 2, excuse me. Uh, anything would be well, that's not going to do it. That's going to be an easy third out. And it's going to stand all three. So that will do it for the T Tartlers at the end of. Five. It is still six to five. Stay and after a one, two, three inning, uh, two innings in a row, they're going to try it again. Once Golden hits that one right to it, and that's going to be a one. Now the first pitch, swung at, right bang it, throw to yellow. Pickle still awful. Was walked twice. But uh, that time. Run! And that was, uh, I believe that was Mr. Cray Cray himself getting on with a single. We go back to the top of the order. And the school out. We are back to Hogue Wilson. Go into the count. Suddenly this game feels like it's moving a bit faster with not as many uh, runs being scored after the very uh, busy uh, first three innings. We are going into the bottom of the sixth with a bunch of zeros on the board. But I must say from, uh, from, from a, a T-Toddler's perspective, not the worst thing in the world. They're currently leading 6-5. to five. It is hanging on on the thread as it were, um, as Peter makes a great time.
Cool, of course, had a very busy day. Home run, a double, and he's going to bang that one off the wall. Oh, look alive there, Hope Willison, almost, uh, almost uh, running himself into <laughs> into an unforgiving wall. It is padded, however, um, not very well, as we must admit, because, uh, as is the style at the time. And he's going to be with a double. His empty pool, crispy yellow, is going to be on the single. And the opening two batsmen for the D Dog in this play are, being fa are doing fantastically. Umpty pools are triple away from the cycle. Boopy Pound Cake has already batted in a run with a double in the third inning today. That was the start of that big run for Chicago. Otherwise, not having a great day. He's only batting 196 going into this game. He's going to hit it straight up the center and make it 7 to 5. So that will help. That is RBI number 6 for Movie Pound Kick. And Bowtie Harvey pops that one high up into the air. It is caught by Gripalo. That is out number 2. Just how we bang it. Two singles and RBI. In the third, as part of that big scoring run, racing this cray cray. Bang it hits it hard. Is it far enough? It is to industry. Well, can we bang it? Makes it ten to five. Four. Chicago Tea Tartlers, and that will bring Dick Doodlebick into this game for Philadelphia. And he gets out of the inning. Well, my word, a four run inning. Capped off with a Howie Bang it three run home run. Uh, not, not what we typically expected from Mr. Bang it. That is his first home run of the season. So, uh, fully to him on that one. And we start things off with a single. And Grip Barlow getting his first hit of the game. Second time on base. He did walk in the first. And it's going to be a single. Oh, excuse me. It's going to be uh, only the one out. Then wildly called out at that one. We bring up Murky Goodbar. One-on-one on one the count for Goodbar. Only one for three today and it's going to be one for four as he will ground that one out to Inchley Snakewag at the throw to Chris Biello. Two out with Wallace Gromit who's one for three today. Hits that one, scooped up by Snake Whacker, throw in time, and it will stand the run up. Three follow and keep this game uh, well in hand for the T-Tartlers. Now it is 10 to 5 after a four run sixth inning for them. Ren Bugby starts things off, facing off against Big Doodlebick, who has an ERA of 9. Made too many appearances. He's only pitched 10 innings, uh, and including, uh, and that was, uh, I believe, a, a, a horrid affair. He uh, has allowed, <laughs> earned, as you can do the math, he has earned 10 runs. He has uh, put a 10 earned runs in those 10 innings pitched. So we'll have to see what happens with Mr. Snake Whacker here, as Bunny did get the first out. Nick Wacker, who is also not having a great day. Here comes Lavender Sandalbags. Sandalbags has not been having a great day. He's been batting 170 this season. Has four home runs. Five runs batted in, but a 170 average is not looking good, and it is finding him coming in as a pitch hitter. And hitting into a fancy damn double play. As Derry Hamper will come in. That Fancy Dan double play brought to you by Fancy Dan Follicle Products. Put more pop in your quaff with Fancy Dan. And their selection of styling salves, clipping powder, and of course, gelatin based hair treatments. You can have your hair lubricated. But why be a Mitchell when you can be a Fancy Dan? 
That opening single is by Nikki Lice. Well, finally, three for four from Nikki Lice. That's really good. Make him feel uh, very, uh, very strong about how he is playing. And Sobin's going to pop that one high into the air for out number one. And it's going to be a home run to industry for Pickles. Dill Hoffel. Home run number three for Dill Hoffel. His first hit of the game. As that is, and it looks like, yes, Poonsley Fair coming in to, uh, to bat. God! For Dick Doodlebick, and that's going to be an error reported to Bowtie Harvey. The throw was in the dirt for Crispy Yellow, and Fair is on with an error. Bring us to the top of the order with Hogue Wilson again. And it's starting to get a little bit dicey for the T-Tartlers. They don't want to blow this big lead. It is a big swing by Hogue Wilson for Craig. Two and he gets him looking. And that's going to be Grieb Barlow hitting that one for a single all the way past Snake Whacker and to Umpty Pool who fielded it. So with Two runners on. Here is Bent Wildly representing the tying one. And he's going to hit it right to Kelly Bang it over to Crispy Yellow to record the out and strand the pool for Poonsley Thursday. He's going to go back onto the bench and a gravy train will come in with an attempt to, if necessary, go two full innings. He's typically the closing pitcher. After a one-on-one -on -one count, Humpty Pool gets it right to uh, Dill Hoffel. The throw to Good Bar is in time. Humpty Pool, a very busy day. Three for five. Uh, three hits for the cycle. He was a triple away. Crispy Yellow is going to sky that one. It looks like it'll be an easy pop-up for out number two. The Green Bar. Gravy Train is perhaps the uh, the, the shining... Uh, Talent out of the bullpen, out of the, uh, the uh, round trousers. He has four saves so far today, uh, so far this game in the season. He's only pitched 10, 10 and a third innings. He does have a loss to his record. Uh, his ERA is currently 436. But again, he has been very reliable. He's more of a ground ball pitcher as he does, in fact, uh, walk Whoopi Pound Cake with two outs and one runner on. Otai Harvey is not the person you want to put at the plate, but he's going to fly that one out to Hope Wilson. And that will stand too. I believe it strands the one. And top of the nine, top of the ninth, Derry Tampa. That was Murky Goodbar with out number one. Recorded. That was a great day for Goodbar with one for five. That's something that the T-Toddler fans will be very happy to see. The cleanup hitter who is batting 400 points today. Wallace Gromit is going to strike out looking. Well, he made it look so easy to Gary Hamper. He has thrown two strikeouts in this game, in this appearance, which has now doubled his season total. And it looks like that'll be uh, sky high, and that will put it out there. Really crispy yellow ends the game, and it is an eventful one for the Chicago Tea Tartlers. My goodness me, what a day! But the Chicago Tea Tartlers improved to nine and seven with a big win over.
over the Philadelphia Brown Trousers to open up this three-game series. The final score, Philadelphia Brown Trousers, seven runs off 12 hits. The Chicago t Turtle is 10 runs off 14 hits with the one error. The winning pitcher is Fig Peters. Peters does, in fact, improve to 1-0. Oh. Does, does not have any sort of uh, win recorded or loss recorded on his record, so that is win number one for Fig Peters. Uh, no save opportunity, but Hash Buffum uh, does get the uh, loss recorded to him, so Hash Buffums will drop two. One and three after that one. And we thank our friends at the Honeyweed Tobacco Company for today's finest dandies of the day. The Honeyweed Tobacco Company, fresh hand-rolled cigarettes grown in the finest fields of the fabled tobacco roads of the Carolinas. They are smooth. They are tasty. They cool you and warm you up in the same breath somehow. And they help you stretch out the lungs and give your lungs the breath of fresh, fine tobacco that can give you vim, vigor, and moxie. Uh, of course, they do provide us with the three finest dandies of the day. They are the sponsors of the entire season across the entire Continental League. Our third finest dandy is Umpty Pool, going three for five with a home run. Uh, Mickey Lice gets the second finest dandy of the day, and I say that's, that's, fair, that's a very fair uh, assessment. He went three for five, two doubles, and uh, batted in three runs. So about as productive as you can get for the brown trousers in their Louis effort. However, it is Cowie Bangit, the star of the day, getting the finest dandy of the day. He will be awarded with a complimentary carton of honeyweed cigarettes. He went three for four today, batted in four, including a home run that got in three. The finest dandy of the day brought to you by the Honeyweed Tobacco Company, reminding you as always to smoke wheat every day. Well, the series continues for these two teams. And uh, my goodness, after, uh, after the days we've seen with this Chicago facing New York series, I, I think we're in for some exciting ones. Uh, the series continues tomorrow. Uh, in fact, it is three games in a row. So tomorrow it will be Molot Jepsen on the mound against Moose Marsid for Philadelphia. The Aces are on the mound for the starters. However, uh, while Jepsen has had a quite, a day, quite a season so far, Masa, uh, Marsid, excuse me, Moose Marsid, not, uh, not quite the performance that he's come to be expected and then of course in two days time barnacle porter will take the, the the mount against jeopardy rims for the brown trousers that'll be the conclusion of that one as he has improved to nine and seven and still battle for second place with the haberdashers uh currently puts them same number of wins but the haberdashers we don't know how that's going to happen with them versus new ohio i believe that game is about to tip off in just a few uh with their first pitch but uh, the battle for second place still remains a close one with a couple more teams starting to climb up and the new Ohio Debonair still are uh, looking very good at 12 and three. But that is uh, all that we have for you today here at WMAQ. My name is Habab Baloney. Uh, we are signing off from Rothstein Park. We'll see you again tomorrow. So uh, until the next game, stay dry, everybody.